everybody, welcome back to Math 1314, more on math. Today we're going to talk about Chapter 3, Section 3, Analyzing Graphs of Quadratic Equations. Now remember, quadratic equations, the standard form of quadratic equations looks like this. Or we can write as a function. AX squared plus BX plus C. Okay, now what we're going to do, we're going to take this equation and look at what happens. Remember, what makes it quadratic is that. A quadratic equation has that basic form. What do we do next? Well, we let's say you change the front of it. There's the egg. What does that do? Remember, the original function is a parabola. Looks like this. And two things happen with a besides direction. It can either get skinnier or it can get wider. Remember, this is x squared. This is ax squared if a, the absolute value of a, if positive or negative gets skinnier, is greater than 1. If, if, if say it's a is 3, 4, 5, the, more, the bigger a is, the skinnier it gets. And this is ax squared when a is between 0 and 1. Okay, of course, Happy value. If it's if a is negative, then it's going down. All right. So we know that that's what the leading coefficient does. Now, what happens when a in x itself if it changes? So we have an x minus h. Remember, anything happens inside here is a horizontal shift. x minus h squared no, so x plus h squared shifts to the left negative h units so it shifts that way if it's x minus h squared it shifts that way h units so it's a horizontal shift of x equals a. Then the next thing we do is a vertical shift. So this is our original x squared function. If, x, if k is positive, it goes up to whatever k is. If k is positive. If k is negative, it drops down. So k is the vertical shift. Okay, we did that last chapter. But now, notice how we shifted from, from our function ax squared plus bx plus c. We shifted it to a x minus h squared plus k. We're going to look at this equation. This one's pretty informative also. We know that the y-intercept is always a constant. We know by looking at a, whether it opens up or down, whether it's going to be skinny or fat, But that's all, pretty much all we can tell from there. With this, A serves the same purpose. This is dependent on A. Same thing with A. It's either up or down, skinny or not. That's what A tells us. But now this tells us where the graph shifts. 
and up and down or left and right. Notice, remember what, remember what shifts in these pictures. The, the origin, the vertex went from there to there. The vertex went from there to there. The vertex went from there up and this one went down. So what's shifting is the vertex. Therefore, when you look at this equation, you can look at, remember, anything inside the parentheses is always the opposite. So if this is plus h, the answer is h, and the outside is just the same. There is your vertex. All right, so what else can we say from there? So when we're asked to do these now, we'll be asked to find the vertex. The vertex is going to be simply the equation h, k. The next thing we're going to be asked is the axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry, since we're looking at a quadratic equation, it's a parabola. The axis of symmetry is the line where the graph creates a mirror image of itself. So if you look at this line here, in other words, is the, is the line axis symmetry. Because now everything on the left side, if I fold it across, looks just like everything on the right. So if I fold, fold it along this axis of symmetry, I'm going to call it from now on AOS, AOS, or AOS. The axis of symmetry is always the x value of the vertex. x value of the vertex. Okay, also from once we have it in this form, we know if it opens up or down, or if it opens up, if A is positive, it opens down if A is negative. If it opens up, we have a minimum. The vertex is at the lowest point. If it opens down, then we have a maximum. Okay, okay, we talked about those earlier. So, let's look at some examples here. f of x equals x squared plus 10x plus 3. Remember, this is standard form. We, we want to convert it to the vertex form. We do this by complete the square. So we go from standard to vertex form by completing the square. 
Alright, so again, let's set equal to zero. So we have x squared plus 10x plus 23. Now, the first thing you have to do, remember, we have to separate the letters from the numbers. So we have to move this 23 to the other side. So we have to subtract 23 from both sides. So negative 23. So separate x's and non x's. Second step. And make sure a is equal to 1. In our case, yes, it is. Then you add b over 2 squared to both sides. Remember, b is whatever is in front of the x. So 10 is B in this case. So we add 10 over 2 squared to both sides. The left side. inside the parentheses, right side, work it out, I want one number over here, so we have x squared plus 10x, 10 divided by 2 is 5 squared, so negative 23, 10 over 2 is 5 squared, negative 23 5 squared is 25 negative 23 plus 25 is positive 2 <laughs> the left side complete the square so remember here we take the first term, take the last term, and the first thing. So x plus 5 squared. Because they're under the squared, that's what put together. Now, last chapter we went ahead and square root both sides and solved it. But we're trying to get it into another form. So move the constant number to the other side. So we uh, we subtract 2 from both sides. x plus 5 minus 2 equals 0. Because now remember this is the this is now the function we want. So the vertex here, remember it's hk, h is negative 5, and k is negative 2. That's the vertex. This is h, and this is k. The axis of symmetry. is the x value. So it's the x equals negative 5 value. Look at the equation. Opens. Look at, look at the value of a. Since a equals positive 1, it opens up. 
because a is greater than zero. Since it opens up, we have a minimum at y equals negative two. The minimum is the y value, the axis symmetry is the x value. Since it opens up and minimum is 2, our range then is from negative 2 to infinity. If the vertex is down here at negative 2, wherever it is, the vertex is at negative 5, negative 2. And it opens up. So it starts at negative 2, and it goes up. The domain for the quadratics are always negative infinity to positive infinity. All right. Now let's look at some more difficult ones. Let's look at some with fractions. Sample 2. x squared over 2 minus 4x plus 8. Now, set this equal to 0. The problem here is this. A is actually one half because x over 2 is the same thing as 1 over 2 x squared so this is a since a first off is positive it's greater than 0 we know it opens up A is between 0 and 1, so it's wider. So that's what we know about the graph so far. And it crosses the x-axis, not the y-axis. This is the y-intercept at negative, at positive 8. So let's look what happens here. Since we have to factor out the A, Remember, we're looking, trying to get to this form. So we have to take the A out. First thing is factor out the A. So we're taking out the 1 half. But... These need to have, the x's need to be together, right? So this one, the denominator is 1. If I make the denominator 2, what does the top become? So 2 times 1 is 2. 4 times 2 is 8. Because 8 over 2 is still 4. So far, so good. All right. So I separate the x's from the non-x's. So I have 1 half x squared minus 8 over 2x. Subtract 8 from both sides. Now I have to get rid of the 1 half. If I factor out the one half, remember this number here, eight over two is the same thing as eight times one half. I can factor out the one half. This one half will play a big role because now on the inside, 
we have to add b over 2 squared. That's inside the parentheses. Why is that important? Because on this other side, when we add b over 2 squared, it has to have that coefficient. a over 2 squared. Because I'm not just adding 8 over 2 squared, I'm adding this in front of it. So on the left, that's left side, I still have x squared minus 8x. But I'm only doing inside the parentheses. 8 over 2 is 4 squared. And work this side out. 8 over 2 is 4. Four squared is sixteen. Two goes into sixteen eight times, so it's negative eight plus eight, which is zero. Which means there's no vertical shift. Now let's fix inside here. First term, first sign, last term. Whatever's under the squares. X minus 4 equals 0. So looking at this, X minus H squared plus K equals 0. The vertex is at 4 comma 0. Because there is no K. The axis of symmetry is x equals 4. Since a is bigger than 0, it opens up. We have a minimum at y equals 0. So the x value is the x symmetry the y value is the minimum, or maximum minimum. In this case, it's minimum. All right. So there's our, that's our answer. Vertex is at four zero. Axis of symmetry is x equals four. We have a minimum value at y equals zero. The maximum minimum is not a point, really. It's, it's a y value. No, let me put that down. Max or min is the y value. So when you're answering max or minimum, the point, the location is y equals whatever the number is. All right. Let's look at another example. Negative two x squared plus ten x minus three over two equals zero. Alright, so we separate so we add twenty three over two to both sides. Those cancels we have that. Now, this has, remember, this is A. The whatever's in front of the x squared is A. Remember we said last chapter, since we have an A, 
what we have to do first is just factor it out. So negative 2 is in front of the x squared, but they factor it out. When we factor out something, it's like dividing by whatever we factored out. So we took out a negative 2, that's A. So now if we divide both of these terms inside the parentheses by negative 2, negative and negative is positive, 2's cancel, we get x squared. Positive and negative divided by negative is negative. 10 divided by 5, divided by 2 is 5. Another way to look at this factoring part is x squared is that. 10 is 2 times 5. So if they both have a 2, I can take out a 2. That leaves me negative x squared plus 5x. But I can't have a negative, so I gotta take out a negative for both both pieces. So it's to take out a negative there, take out a negative there. But now I always check it. Negative two times x squared, negative two x squared. Negative two times negative five is positive ten, which is bad. So alright. Let's look inside the parentheses. We have negative two x squared minus 5x, we have to add b over 2 squared, so 5 over 2 squared to both sides, equals 23 over 2, but remember, this coefficient goes with it, negative 2, 5 over 2 squared. Because what I'm really multiplying, adding to the inside here, is negative 2 times that. So I do it over here. On the left-hand side, we can complete the square. So whatever's under the squares, will go inside here. So it's x, negative, and 5 over 2. Let's work out the right side. We have 23 over 2. This side becomes negative 2. So this and square both of those, so it becomes 25 over 4. The 2's cancel, so it becomes 25 over 2. And it's negative. So positive and negative becomes negative. So we have 23 over 2 minus 25 over 2. We have a common denominator, 2, so we have 23 minus 25, which becomes negative 2 over 2, which becomes negative 1. All right. So now we have the left side to put it all together. We get negative 2 x minus 5 over 2 squared. Add 1 to both sides. So, remember this is a x minus h squared plus k so the vertex is at positive five, oh, positive 5 over 2 and the k is 1 okay Symmetry is at x equals 5 over 2. 
since a equals negative 2, it opens down. And it's very skinny because a is bigger than 1. So we have a maximum. So the maximum is at y equals 1. So far, so good. Now, so that's the first part. That's the first way of finding the vertex and axis symmetry. We have from standard form converted to the vertex form, the standard form to vertex form. That way we could find HK. Here's a note. The vertex is always halfway between the two x-intercepts if they exist. Remember, sometimes you can have no x-intercepts. If you only have one x-intercept, that is the vertex. If you have one x-intercept, that is the vertex. So, since the axis of symmetry the x value of the vertex is halfway between the x-intercepts the x-intercepts also the solutions the solutions for x-intercepts for quadratic Remember, we used the quadratic equation. Negative b plus minus b squared minus 4ac over 2a. There's two of them. Since there's two of them, how do I find the halfway point between them? If we had two points, 2 and 7. halfway. 2 plus 7 divided by 2 4.5. So 4.5 is halfway between 2 plus 7. So we add the two end points and divide by 2. So if we add both of our end points let's make that one minus. Oh, I'll make it plus. Okay b squared minus 4ac over 2a minus negative b minus b squared minus 4ac over 2a all over 2. This is the x value of the vertex.
So we have a common denominator, 2a. We have negative b plus square root b squared minus 4ac minus 2a. This negative sign is going to only affect the top. It's adding, we're adding both of them. I'm sorry, I was thinking something else. So if we add both of these, so we have a common denominator of 2a on the top. This is that dividing line. There's 2 on the bottom. So on the top, what do we have? We have negative b plus b squared minus 4ac plus a negative b minus b squared minus 4ac. So since there's no coefficient, I can just drop those. Negative b, negative b is negative 2b positive radical this negative they cancel out over 2a divided by 2 so the 2's up on top cancel so we have negative b over a over 2 divided by 1. Take the top, leave it alone, flip the bottom, so the x value of the vertex is equal to negative b over 2a. Yeah, mathematically that's how we prove it. But we can we also see that from the quadratic formula itself. Negative b plus or minus b squared minus four ac. This. Remember we said earlier, it's a determinant, a discriminant. If it's zero, we only have one solution. The one solution we have is that. If there's only one solution, then that's the vertex. So negative b over 2, a, tells us the x value of the vertex. Alright, so the x value of the vertex is negative b over 2a. What's the y value? Well, the function notation is that. That's x. This is x. So if we plug in negative b over 2a inside the function, then we'll get the y value. So there's a shortcut. So let's, let's check one of them. Let's look at the easy one first. We had x squared plus 10x plus 23. The vertex, first off, a is 1, b is 10, c is 23. So negative b over 2a. And whatever that is, plug it inside the function. So 
negative b over 2a. Negative b is 10, 2 times 1, so it's negative 10 over 2 is negative 5. So the x value is negative 5. Take this, plug it inside our function. This is our function. So it's negative 5 squared plus 10 times negative 5 plus 23. Negative 5 squared is 25. Positive is negative is negative. 10 times 5 is 50. Plus 23. 25 plus 23 is 48. Minus 50. 50 is bigger, so it's negative. 50 minus 48 is negative 2. So our vertex then is at negative 5 and negative 2. Okay, so the second one is good. x squared over 2 minus 4x plus 8. a is 1 over 2. b is negative 4. And c is positive 8. So for the x value, we do negative b over 2a. So negative, negative 4 over 2 times 1 half. 2 cancel, so just 1. So the answer is just negative, negative 4 makes it a positive 4. So in our vertex, the positive 4. So this, this function equals f of x. So I put 4 inside there. So I have f of 4 equals 4 squared over 2, 4 times 4 plus 8. 4 squared is 16 over 2. 4 times 4 is 16 plus 8. Sixteen divided by two is eight. Eight plus eight is sixteen. Minus sixteen is zero. And since a is positive, we know it opens up. So that's our axis of symmetry. And the max min value. Alright, let's do the homework. Good luck.